Welcome back to another one, and today I'm going to be talking about the iPhone Pro. So I was going to do a review on this thing, but there are just so many reviews, like Marquez's review, he just did such a great job talking about every single feature on the phone um, that I feel like I don't have anything to contribute there. So today I'm going to be talking about my thoughts on this, stuff I've learned, and stuff I think it would be helpful for you to know if you're thinking about getting one of these, or even if you already have one of these. So number one, yes, this does have some fingerprints on it, because it is a fingerprint magnet. I'll talk about that in a second. Um, but it is a beautiful looking phone. Um, it does look a little bit darker in person, so once I color grade this, it'll look a little bit closer to how it does in real life. It's a pretty masculine color in person because I was worried about it looking a little bit um, non-masculine, but it, it looks really good in person. And if you noticed, I filmed a vlog using this first because I wanted to kind of get used to this camera system and find out some things that I like about it and don't like about it, and that's what I'm going to talk about in this video. So first off, I was confused at where I need to look at when I was filming with this thing, so I'm going to go over this so you guys know. Um, that's the telephoto, that's the ultra wide, and that is the normal wide. So this is the camera that you need to be staring at, unless you're doing ultra wide. And while we're talking about the different focal lengths of the camera, um, this is, I actually don't know the millimeter, um, but anyway, it's the wide, I'd say it's about a 23, 25 millimeter um, lens equivalent on the normal wide, and it looks really good. It's really crisp, super impressive. I really do like it, and I think it looks really good. And I think to like the untrained person's eye, they would not be able to tell you're using an iPhone, and it looks, it looks really good, especially when you add that fake f-stop, which we'll talk about in a second. So the wide is great. The telephoto lens, um, it's pretty good. Uh, I don't really use telephoto or anything, but it's gonna definitely get you by it. Um, it doesn't look quite as good as the wide, but it still looks really good. Then the ultra wide, when you switch to that ultra wide, um, everything just looks, pretty bad in my opinion. I would not use the ultra wide unless I really had to. So in my opinion on this, the two usable cameras for videos mainly for me is wide and the telephoto. Ultra wide, it doesn't do good in low light at all. You have to have perfect light conditions and it still doesn't look as near as good as the wide. All right, so at the time of filming this video, um, the ProRes update for the iPhone just came out. So I haven't had a chance to really mess with that too much or anything. Um, but the normal resolutions on this phone are going to be in 1080, it's going to be 30 and 60, and there's also the slow-mo, which is 120 and also 240 frames a second, which everything kind of gets mushy there, but it, it looks all right. Just don't overuse it like I did in my last video. And then in 4K, there's going to be 24 frames, 30 frames, and 60 frames. 24 or 30 is normally what I do, and it looks really good. Um, the file size for 4K is not too much bigger on iPhone, so and if I can, I try to use the 4K. And I do want to mention, once you bump it up to 60, it looks really smooth, but I see a little bit of rolling shutter, so I wouldn't like use 60 um, very often unless you wanted to like slow stuff down just a little bit in your editing software. I mainly stick with the 24 and 30 because I think that looks the best, and it just gets a little bit weird when you're trying to go up to 60. All right, now let's talk about cinematic mode. I really like cinematic mode, and I think it looks really good if you mess with the settings a little bit. And the default f-stop when you go into cinematic mode is gonna be f2.8. Now, remember this is a fake f-stop, it's doing this all digitally, so it's not perfect. Sometimes, you know, it'll get a little bit of background through your fingers and stuff, but it looks really good with one caveat, and that's gonna be if you tone down or raise the f-stop a little bit. And in my last video I said I was filming on f4, um, but the thing was, once like, you shut your phone off and that camera app gets closed, it goes default back to f2.8. I heard from people that it's supposed to stay at the f-stop setting that you put it at permanently, but for me, it went back to f2.8 and the whole vlog was in f2.8, which the background was just way too blurry, which made it just look really bad with way too much fake depth of field because then you really see when it messes up. So I found a lighter depth of field about f4.0 looks really good. If it stays, that might be something they fix in an update because it's supposed to stay at f4.0, but for me right now, it goes back to f2.8 randomly. But it looks amazing, don't get me wrong. All right, we're about done talking about the cameras, which is the main thing that I like to talk about, um, as you can tell. Um, the camera bump on this is a lot bigger. If we take a look at it there, there might be some fingerprints on it, is what it is. The camera bump is way bigger. On the last iPhone, oh no, I'm on the wrong side because I'm looking at it really weird. It took up like that much, now it takes up half of the width of the phone. And at first when I saw it, I was like, ooh, that's a lot of camera. Um, I think it looks amazing. When I see an older Pro, I see how it takes up less space, and I just think this looks a lot better. Of course, it's thicker, which is kind of annoying. The cases, they have to have more of a bezel around the camera to protect it because they stick out more. There's like three notches, which is like 
glass, metal, and then more glass, but for the quality, it's totally worth it. All right, and now going from the camera, just onto the exterior of this thing, of course, I said it's amazing, and with the pros, they stuck with the glossy on the sides and matte on the back. This thing, since it's super glossy on the side, and this was a complaint from last year's pros, th this thing's a complete fingerprint magnet. The cameras get fingerprints all over them, and even the, the back is not too bad, like the back's tolerable, but the sides get fingerprints on them like crazy. Also, if you have the clear case, this thing is so dirty already. You're gonna have to carry a microfiber cloth like on you at all times if you're crazy like me because it gets fingerprints really fast but it looks so good, doesn't matter. And this thing is thicker and heavier. When you put a 12 and a 13 like right next to each other, you can see the difference but it's not that big of a deal. But when you actually pick up the two phones side by side, it's like, you can tell this thing's thicker and you can tell it's heavier. Massive camera on the back and it being thicker with a bigger battery and of course with more metal material to you know make it thicker. It's very noticeable. It's a pretty heavy phone like it's not horrible but if you have like light surfer pants like I live in Florida I'm wearing like board shorts all the time and this does not go very well because it is so heavy and it is uh, not super fun to carry in your pocket. All right now let's talk about one of the big things which I really love and that's the 120 hertz. So you already know the old iPhone Pro and the normal 13, not the 13 Pro, um, has 120 hertz. There's also me right there. So that means that the screen refreshes 120 times a second instead of 160 times a second. So personally me, I've never had a 120 hertz device before. So when I take this and I start scrolling, I notice it because I'm like looking for it, but mo most people don't notice it. It's definitely not something that's necessary, but it just makes the iPhone experience so much like smoother with the OS and everything. It's really nice. But I really did notice it when I grabbed a 12. So I've been using this for like two weeks now and then I grabbed a 12 and I swiped the first swipe. I wasn't like looking for it. I was like, oh shoot, because I noticed that 120 Hertz. So it really is a nice feature that I think all the iPhones should have, but it's a nice pro feature. Also, the notch. So they talked about how they made it so much smaller, right? But they also made it taller and didn't talk about it. Um, so I was concerned about the notch like impeding on videos when I'm trying to watch them. I don't notice it even being smaller on the sides at all. And I don't notice it being taller either. So the notch is still there and it doesn't bother me that much because I'm used to seeing it. But if you're worried about it being tall and impeding on your videos, I don't really notice it. And then my last point, which is battery life. So they're talking about, you know, how it's thicker and how it's going to get better battery life because, of course, with the shoot uh, ProRes, the cool feature on the screen where it goes from 1 hertz to 120 hertz, depending on if you're scrolling and how you're using the phone, and also the bigger battery. It has much higher battery life by, I think, about an hour than the 12 Pro. Do I notice that going from a 12 Mini to a 13 Pro? Yeah. Before I, if I use the 12 Mini, for like two and a half, three hours, it would go down to like 30, 40%, which was really scary because that's about how much I use it in a day. And if I used it a little bit more, I could kill it in a day, which is not fun. On this, if I spend about two and a half, three hours on it, it goes down to about 65, 70%, which is awesome. I can get two days out of this if I wanted to. And battery life is perfect. And that's about all my initial thoughts on this. Of course, as I use it more, use it for all my vlogs, I'm going to find a lot more that I like and don't like about it. But right now, if you're thinking about upgrading from a 12 Pro to a 13 Pro, you've heard a lot of stuff like it's not that big of a difference. It's actually, there's enough stuff where it's a big difference. And other than there pretty much being no exterior change, all the interior features feels like a jump from like a 13 to a 14 like a new generation jump. So I would definitely upgrade if I were you. And I'm super happy that I did upgrade from my 12 mini to a 13 pro. And it is, as I say a lot, super awesome. So thank you all for watching. Also, we hit 500 subscribers. I don't know how many we have at the time posting this video, um, but thank you. That's pretty awesome. And I'm going to continue to keep making, I was going to say cool, interesting content like this. And I hope you all keep enjoying it. Peace out. See you next time.